Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing on in our book that we're uh, doing commentary on, The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. And today we're looking at chapter 47 and it's called Inheriting the Promise. Andrew starts out in Hebrews 6, 13 through 15. For when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. All right. So Andrew starts off saying the Christian life is a race to begin profits, nothing unless we run to the end and reach the goal. Faith may accept only long suffering inherits the promise. So he's saying, you know, faith may initially get you in the race, but long suffering is going to carry you through to the end. There is nothing the church needs more than the preaching of daily diligence and perseverance as the indispensable condition of growth and strength. Now, if you've tuned in to the last two episodes, we've been talking about what, how we need to stay diligent and how we need to avoid sloth. And it's really, really crucial in our walk with God. He goes on with uh, the scripture, multiplying, I will multiply thee. Scripture teaches us that the highest blessing which God can bestow, that which makes us truly godlike, is the power of multiplying ourselves, of becoming as God is the source and the blessing of other lives. So we're not only supposed to be he, God doesn't want to only bless us. He wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing. He wants to multiply us in that way. He says, of the living creatures, it is said, God bless them, saying, be fruitful and multiply. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of man, and God bless them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. So of Noah too. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said, be fruitful and multiply. It is the glory of God that he is the dispenser of life, that in his creatures he multiplies his own life and blessedness. And it is one of his highest blessings when he communicates this power of increase to those whom he chooses for his service. So he goes back to the scripture, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Every believer who will but claim and give himself up to the blessing of God will find that the blessing is a power of the divine life which will make him fruitful in blessing to others and make it true of him too. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. Even we, like Christ, can become priests, bringing the blessing of God to those who know him not. So remember the definition of a priest we learned earlier? is a priest is somebody that points people to God, that brings people to God. And God wants to multiply us. He wants to bless us so that we can be a, a means of blessing others. He says, it is when this fullness of blessing in its divine energy, when this blessing will bless thee begins to be understood. And the soul sees that there is something beyond the mere being saved from wrath. Okay, we did talk about that one last time too. The, being born again is just the beginning of the, of the journey, not the, not the goal. He says, and they have an idea that there is a becoming the recipient and the channel and the dispenser of life and blessing to others. That it becomes willing to sacrifice everything and in long suffering to endure until it obtained the promise. So when you get in this mode of, you know what, God, I'm willing to, to lay down my life, to give up things for, for, the, um, for seeking you so that you can bless me, so that not I just won't be like a pond at the end of a stream that just, you know, just keeps uh, pulling in water and just containing water. But I want to be a river, a channel of blessing to others. You know, the Dead Sea, um, the Dead Sea is that way. It, it has water coming into it, but it has become just a, an area of really salty. I think it's at 33% salt where the, uh, 
I think I think ocean water is somewhere between three and four percent salt. So the Dead Sea really, I think there's like a, I don't know, some form of algae that can maybe survive that. But everything else in the Dead Sea is there's no, there's no life there, and it's because it's just become like this dead end. And uh, I forgot there's a term I'm trying to remember, but but you know basically it's just become this. It's it's just you know, a water dead end, and there's no life flowing through it like a river. And that's what God wants for us. He wants to bless us, yes, but he wants us to be a dispenser of that blessing. You know, people talk about how we're the hands and feet. We're the body of Christ, right? So we're if we, we're to become that dispenser of life from him, if we have the life of Christ living in us by his spirit, then we are dispensers, but we have to be willing. We have to be obedient and we have to be diligent and long suffering. He says, Christian, wouldest thou be an imitator of Abraham and let the God who spake to him speak to thee? Remember it is not so easy to receive and claim this promise. Abraham received it the way of received it. I'm sorry. Let me start over. Abraham received it in the way of faith and obedience and self-sacrifice in the entire surrender to God's will and leading. It was when he had sacrificed Isaac, yea, more when do, in doing so, he had sacrificed himself. So when he gave up Isaac, I mean, many of those of you who are parents, you know what that would be like. That would be just giving up yourself. You'd be sacrificing yourself. I heard someone say one time that uh, a definition of being um, a parent is having this little the, your heart now is walking outside of your body it's walking around and it's true it's they capture your heart so when he was sacrificing Isaac he was sacrificing himself and when he was willing to do that it says that the promise was given to him by an oath God will speak to thee as truly as to Abraham learn with him to go out of thy country and thy home Give thyself to God's leading. Be prepared to sacrifice all. I know I'm reading that with emphasis because it's just as much for me as it is for you. But we really, we've got to be willing to follow where God leads. We can't just let those just be um, poetic words. But we've got to be willing to give ourselves to God's will completely and to sacrifice all. Because that's what Jesus, our master, our, the great shepherd, that's what he did. And, and he beckons us to follow in his footsteps. Andrew goes on to say, God will meet thee too with his double blessing, and thy heart will become strong to hear his voice. We talked about that last time. We are in a day and time. It's imperative that we know God's voice. He says, but your heart will become strong to hear his voice. Blessing, I will bless. Multiplying, I will multiply. And it will be true of thee as of Abraham. He says, come and learn from Abraham the secret. God spake to him. Listen to God. Let God speak to you. Follow where he leads. Obey what he commands. He will bring you to the place of blessing, the place of the revelation of himself. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that the end goal of fellowship with God? of surrender to God is to have a revelation of, of who he is. It says that one day, you know, when we're in heaven, we will see him as he is. He'll be, he'll be revealed to us in a way we've never known before. And one last thing Andrew says here, he says, are you a worker in God's service? Wait upon God to speak this word to you too. Multiplying, I will multiply you. He can make even you a blessing to many. Well, that inspires me because so many times, I don't know about you, but you wonder like, God, am I making an impact for your kingdom? What, you know, what am I doing um, that, uh, what should I be doing? It's just all these questions. We all want significance. We all want meaning in our lives. But God's saying, just listen to me, obey me, and I'll multiply. And God will multiply in a way that it's not humanly possible to do it any other way. And 
it will be done in a way that, um, of course, God's fingerprints will be all over it. You'll know that it was God. And he says he can make even you a blessing to many. That, that is an encouraging word. I hope you've been encouraged. And I also hope that you come back next time for our next chapter. God bless.